guys. Welcome back to Mario the Stag. Guess what we got? Dun dun dun! After all, after all these months of waiting and waiting, and I know you guys have been really keen to see what's been going on with the 2500 S, but we have got, at last, the Triumph 2500 S back on the road. Alan's finished the engine, done a good job, it's running okay, and um, just going for an initial test drive to see what it's like and uh, so far I think since we bought it we've now done 101 miles that included 84 uh, before we broke down two years ago so uh, anyway picked it up uh, the other day and um, needs a bit of a clean and tidy up but um, just thought I'd share with you the delights and the joy of getting the Triumph 2500S back it's really really great has it really been two years it has been nearly near as damn in two years yeah it has crazy yeah so trumpet pilot sparky bob is with us today hey yeah <laughs> so there he is so he's coming to help me phone for the breakdown people if ever we need that no we won't be we'll be all right be fine so just thought i'd report back on um what this thing's like to drive it's uh, been a couple of years almost as we say and uh obviously a saloon not as powerful as the triumph stag doesn't feel as direct in terms of drive but again we are running in here it's a kind of most unusual thing to have to worry about these days i remember cars back in the 70s would always have a little card in the back of the window saying running in please pass well apparently we've got to run this for about 500 miles without overcooking it alan's not actually put the kick down cable back on the box really just to make sure that i don't wang it we'll try and drop the drop a cog or six and then well there's only three in there but try and drop a cog or two and then over rev the car so we're obviously going to bed it in gently um topped up all the oils he's done the um fluid in the gearbox so we're all uh, all tickety boo wasn't too many issues in putting it back together but um he knows his triumph 2000s that's his passion you won't have seen it on Harry the stag but he had a black triumph 2000 for many years which um sadly he sold but has now got it back uh, by hook or by crook I don't know what's it. anyway he's, he's redoing that now so he loves his Triumph 2000 so him and his mate Budgie have been putting this car back together for the last two or three or four weeks and um, I'm glad they did because there were so many little idiosyncrasies that actually I wouldn't have had a clue about so thankfully for him you know he's done that simple things like balancing up the um, the carburettors and stuff like that I've never done that I'll be honest so he can do it by sound and his all his years experience so so that's really great and um, tinkering around as we have I'm sure I could look this up in the manual but we found a button that we thought was a cigarette lighter but it comes out and goes on but we're not quite sure what it does we can't pull it out any further no, no it, that's all it it's does important whatever it is you haven't been ejected James through the roof not James yet Bond style but I'll have to look that up on the manual and um, answers in the description see what that is but yeah here we are here we have the car the um speedo is a little bit ambitious or perhaps unambitious i don't know it says i'm doing 20 somewhere between 10 and 20 anyway i suspect i need to change something in that instrument to get it a little bit more accurate than it is so it's rather a guesstimate as to what speed we're doing um i'm just erring on the side of caution and being safe if i'm honest so that's that's good um yeah, it's a little bit flammy. It feels, it's got the Borg Warner 35 gearbox in it, as you probably know, uh, when you saw us putting it back in, back in the summer. But uh, it doesn't feel that powerful, but then I guess it's a 1970s, two and a half litre, six cylinder engine. And I'm sure it'll get better once we've run it in. So I really don't want to floor it just yet before we um, get it run in. So that's the uh, cunning plan. But yeah, just take a look. At the, the delights of this car it's a saloon plenty of space inside drives really nice the steering on it is very precise and uh suspension too feels like you're wafting down the roads but without dwelling too much on the corners either so that's really important and of course we've got plenty of space in the back for two if not three adults i've never actually checked to see if we've got any seat belts in there james why did he i can't see any <laughs> Well, back in the days, you didn't need them. Well, yeah, actually, technically, when this car was made, I think even these front seat belts were were optional. It's hard to imagine now, isn't it? Can you imagine getting into a car without seat belts and driving off down the road? Anyway, we'll obviously.
obviously bring you up to date with uh, progress as we as we get going. Um, it does need a bit of a clean up. Uh, it's got a few bumps and squeaks that need fixing. It's all part of the running in process. I'll be going back to Allen's in due course just to get the um, kick down cable sorted and just to, I think we'll re-talk the heads as well just to be on the safe side after a few hundred miles. But uh, yeah, happy days or what? Okay, now what I loved about some of these 70s cars, because my first car was a Triumph Herald 1200 saloon and it had these little quarter lights. You just don't see them these days on modern cars. But if, it, and I was a smoker back in the day, you could just pop your little quarter light open like that, have your fag and flick it out the side. You wouldn't see that on any health and safety adverts these days, would you? If it's hot and sunny, and you haven't got aircon because these cars, I don't know if they did have aircon because a stag did have aircon on some models, particularly ones that went overseas. But uh, simply all you do is obviously rotate that without damaging the varnish, but um, that brings the wind in basically. So I'll have to do that a little bit now. But uh, yeah, what a nifty little feature. Very, very handy. Quarter light, marvellous. Now, one unique feature I found with the 2500S is this here clock because notoriously on the Triumph Stag, the clocks don't blink in well work. This one actually does seem to be doing quite well, so that's a, a nice feature. I've uh, got temperature here, you can see it's running nicely. I've uh, got my charging bolts there on the battery. Obviously that's the um, revometer, tachometer, revs per minute. And that's the uh, rather vague speedo, 91,000 miles we've done now, half a tank of fuel. And we even got hazards, so that's a great feature to have. Uh, lights are all down here, which I can have to turn on in a minute because it's getting dark, it's now November. So we'll have to turn on the lights in a sec, but very easy to drive. And uh, getting quite a few looks actually, surprisingly. Well, why wouldn't it? It's a good looking car. A few schoolboys just checking us out a minute ago, I noticed. One or two um, smiles from other passers by. So, really great to enjoy a fantastic car. Good to give it a good run up the dual carriageway. Oh, I can see a traffic jam, a modern invention. Da, da, da. <laughs> now, this was a premium car back in the day, 2500S. You were somebody if you actually had one of these cars, high end executive car. Uh, sadly, we have a rather new uh, stereo radio here, but uh, we will look to get some retro uh, stereo system in here in due course. All the usual buttons up here, that's the fan, that's for the smoking, like I was saying earlier, using the water light. And this is the choke which you put out, obviously, to get the thing started in the time on a traditional way. And it's not somewhere, as my missus would say, the hang a rang bag. So I can't use the light because it'll fall off. Yes. Well, it might not. No, it's this side. <laughs> doesn't work. It does when you get in. Well that's handy for everyone to know, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> Comes with a complimentary light but don't use it because it could fall <laughs> off. Well it's kind of all right. It does work when you get in. But if it doesn't fall off it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah what else? I'm, I like this feature James. It has modern cars. It was all cutting edge for the time. This is 1977 was it? I forget now. 76, there you go. So, uh, sun's coming in from the side there, look. Nice people at Triumph thought about that. They don't even think about that in cars now. <laughs> oh, yes, they do. Not all of them. And you got some very posh, very, very posh oh. grab handles. Oh, yeah, posh. sprung loaded. Look at that. Yeah. Crazy. <laughs> don't see it's the like sort that. of handle that you get on a bus. Yes. But with leather. Posh. <laughs> very posh. Nice and fancy. So, I want to hang your suit on the back there, look, you got a little little plastic hooks. Plastic hooks that hang your stuff up. Yeah. Loads of room, plenty of leg space. See, legs outstretched, loads of room. Ooh, Acres. Okay. Plenty of space in the back. For what, in, in comparative terms to all these other modern cars on the road, you know, looking like, there you go, Skoda Octavia over there. Something of, I don't know, relative proportions. Yeah. This car is a lot smaller, mm. but a lot bigger, all Weird, at the same it? time. It's like a lot of 60s and 70s cars, like the Mini, like the um, Fiat 126, uh, no, Fiat uh, Cinquecento. We saw one at the Christchurch car show the other week. They're, um, they're actually very big inside. The Mini always was as well, which is bizarre, because you look at them on the outside, especially now compared to modern cars. Well, look at this Mini here, this one here. I mean, it's a huge, great outfit compared to the 1960s equivalent, and yet, 
it seems like there's still loads of space inside the original 1960s cars. And this one, you'd probably get three people across that back seat quite comfortably. The boot is absolutely cavernous. So you get a, if you play golf, not that I play golf, because I think it's an awful sport. Anyway, no, no offense. <laughs> Sorry to any golf fans. Long story. <laughs> got forced to play golf once and regretted it after hitting the promotional Mercedes with my first tee-off shot in a pro-am tournament that I didn't know I was supposed to be part of. Uh, my career went downhill from there. Anyway, you could get two or three bags of golf clubs in the back. Um, so. so you don't like it because you weren't very good. I wasn't very good, James. It's the same as me. Yes. Terrible sport. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's a delight to drive, it really is. Um, seems to be behaving itself okay. Nice progressive brakes. Goes particularly well sat in a traffic jam. Yeah, I know. There's not overheating, there's no, no. increase in temperature. The temp thermometer's okay. That's the acid test. Yeah, we've had a few of those in our time, usually involving green flag. Your green flag's best customer, aren't you? Yeah. Well, worst customer. Yes, I'm surprised we're not banned, to be honest. But I could say nothing but really good compliments for Green Flag. They're not uh, sponsoring this channel or anything like that, but believe but me. if they want to, <laughs> yes, that would be great. That would be good. I think in a way they've kind of sponsored us already, yeah. to be fair. Oh, here's a feature for all you stag owners out there. Or you stag owners out there, sound like Radio Fab FM. These little plastic inserts, I was told recently, the stag's got the same too. They used to just be open slots here. The reason they put these little plastic inserts in is because certain ladies wearing long necklaces apparently used to get them trapped in here and then either rip the necklace off their neck or they'd have a problem with the steering. So I don't know if that's actually true or not, but someone was telling me the other day. So if you want to write in and let me know, I'll be very interested. I wonder how many other stories we're going to get now. <laughs> yes. Well, we could go back to those straps, couldn't we? They could be very useful for other activities. <laughs> not that I'd know. Keep it clean. Keep it clean. Keep it clean and PG. <laughs> exactly. And uh, James is just proving the efficiency of these uh, seatbelt lights by lifting up his Aris and dropping down again to prove that the actual sensor does work. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, um, interesting, isn't it? I suggested to um, Lady Throop the other day her indoors. <laughs> but what we should do now is actually do my first journey in reverse. In other words, drive from Bournemouth back up to Stirling in Scotland. I wonder if it would do it. I think it probably would actually because it's driving really well. So uh, maybe that's another one for next time. Well, it's been an amazing journey over the last nearly two years getting this 2500S back on the road. But I think you can see the car always deserved to be reborn and thankfully with a new engine and also a new gearbox the Eddie the S uh, drives again and i um, so pleased to be out and about with it. We'll obviously come back in future weeks and give you an update on progress but for now thanks for watching and we'll see you online on Ari the Stag very soon. Cheers for now. Bye bye.